welcome back. Uh, if it's your first time, welcome to the Greener Life. Today, we'll be showing you the basic tools and basics of harvesting and sifting worm castings. So, let's start with the basic tools. Obviously, you're going to need yourself some nice sifting screens. Uh, I like to go with a larger. This is a nine millimeter, almost one centimeter screen. And then we have the smaller three millimeter screen. It allows us to do a nice quick pass, get the bulk of the material, and then take the fines afterwards. Optional, some gloves. I prefer the black ones. I think the aesthetic's a bit nicer. Then we've got a scoop, a brush for cleaning up with, then another optional is if you have some really wet castings, it can be quite handy to have some some trays to spread your material out onto. These are actually boot trays, but they work pretty well. It allows you to spread the material out and get it drying nicely. Uh, you also need some tubs. This way you can separate the overs from the unders, or the fine material. And then a nice, fairly high-sided tray. This is a potting tray from Garland. Very useful tray, that. And obviously, you need nicely finished worm castings. So I'll get set up and bring you back in. So we're all set up, ready to go. Uh, if you were here for my last video on setting up one of these worm bins, you'll know that this top end here is the active area. As we get down here, they're a lot less active, and our bottom area here should be pretty much worm-free, finished process material. So, um, just gonna get a scoop at a time. You don't wanna overload your sieve. It'll just make hard work for yourself. You also notice there's some stones and some clay pebbles. Uh, I like to add them to the worm bins. Not as many as you see, actually. Some of these will be removed, but uh, I like to keep them in there for aeration. And I find it also can help when I'm sifting. Uh, breaks up any of the larger chunks, and they ain't going anywhere. They'll just end up back in the system. And already, with a nice gentle shake, that's pretty much there. So, I'm just going to sift about one third of this bin. All the really large stuff goes straight back in. Any of the worms that get caught up as well. Uh, the way this bin operates, it tends to dry out the further down we go, so it makes it a lot easier. If anyone has ever tried sifting wet material, <laughs> uh, you'll know you're better off just coming back another day. It is not going to be fun. If anyone's wondering, this is a one litre scoop, but you can use whatever size seems appropriate for yourself. Uh, a couple of large handfuls is about the most you'll want in one of these sieves. This is one of the larger sieves that you'll find now. Right. That looks to be about one third of the tub. So we're gonna put away the larger sift, move this material into a smaller tub and start working with the finer sieve. So I'll put this away.
little bit of stuff on the bottom. Get your paintbrush. Helps just tidy all the corners up. Gather all the material nicely. clean and ready to start again. Uh, close up this worm bin quickly actually. This time we're going to have to <laughs> sift and shake quite a bit more. Uh, the first one was just to get the big bits out, but you'll see there's going to be quite a lot of large material that doesn't pass through the 3mm screen. But again, because this is so lovely and dry, the, the yield for effort is so much better. You don't want to be fighting your way through sifting really horribly wet castings. this tub again. Personally I find if I move the material to the side I can see when the yield from my shaking just isn't worth the effort anymore but this material is really nice and dry to work with so it's not so much of an issue. Uh, you will see perlite and things in my tubs quite often, uh, roots from uh, starting, starting seeds and plants that have failed for going outdoors, they'll usually hold on to a few bits of uh, perlite and starting material, but the vast majority is going to be I would say 98% pure worm castings. I was expecting this video to be a lot longer. Uh, sometimes this process can be uh, a little hard on the arms, but I'm just going to keep rabbiting on about it. The dryness of this tub has just made this so nice, so easy to work. And again, because that migration, keeping the worms in that active zone, I'm getting a few little babies in here, little teenagers, but most of the adults are in the right place and all of these can get added back or be moved into a new tub start the process all over again see, well, that's about a litre left in there nice shake, give her a tap See if a close up of the overs is worthwhile. Still, if you were looking to top dress your garden, this material is perfectly good. Uh, I'm just really picky. <laughs> this uh, larger chunk I will quite often use as a base for creating potting soils where this finer material, really lovely stuff here, really nice. So this stuff, uh, typically I'll mix it with any amendments that are going to get top dressed, and where there's so much active biology in here, 
you'll find it just makes the top dress seem to become more available a lot faster. Obviously you've got all the nutrition that's available in the worm castings, helping things along. But again, with this finer stuff, I kind of feel like it gets washed deeper into the soil. Especially if I'm using it as a top dress. But now we can move that to the sides. Prepare our tub again. Gather my paintbrush. Waste not, want not. Let's take a look. So, this is a 10 litre tub, and I think we've probably got a good three and a half, four litres of material just from one of these worm bins. And that material, uh, that's probably, you could get that maybe every two to three weeks using this method. Uh, personally, I have several of these tubs in rotation. Um, currently nine of them, but that might be a little bit too big for my indoor use. So, I hope you found this useful. This is a very simple overview of harvesting worm castings, the tools you might need, how long it can take when things go well, and hopefully a little bit of advice of if you've got really wet castings, make sure to spread them out, get them aired out and dried because you'll just be fighting yourself and making so much more hard work. Uh, if you've enjoyed this content, uh, please give us a like. If you enjoy what, what we're putting out there, think about giving us a subscribe and seeing what's to come. Uh, I will be doing a rundown of creating one of these worm tubs, or at least firing it up from scratch. Um, that should be interesting for people. Uh, and I've also got very soon on the calendar, I'll be bringing out just a quick soil mix, nice basics, how to make an indoor potting soil, and then potentially with some extras, how to fire up your indoor potting soil. But that's it. That's it for this time. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.